just starting karate. What do you say are the benefits that cause people to train for many years, even decades, or even a lifetime? What are the benefits? Well, I think when people start training, they start for a lot of different reasons. Sometimes just for self-defense, sometimes for to participate in sport or just to get in shape. Sometimes it's a social activity. But I think over time, over years as they train, their motives change because their attitude toward the art changes. And it seems to me that people who stay in this for a very long time find out and do that because they find out it's really good for them, not only physically, but emotionally and psychologically. I think it develops strong people, it develops a strong attitude when people train properly and they pursue the art on a regular basis. Well, why did you begin training? I began training when I was uh, almost 12 years old, and the reason I did was that I, was, I had a problem with depth perception with my eyes. My eyes don't focus the, the way normal people's eyes do or normal eyes do and therefore I couldn't tell how far away or close something was to me. So when I tried other sports like baseball, the ball would be past me when I would be trying to hit it, or I'd catch it with my face rather than my glove because I couldn't tell the distance. And I got to karate because I picked up a book written by uh, Nishiyama Sensei, and it showed in there, it said in there, that anybody could do karate, it didn't matter, and you could do it at any level you wanted to. And I found out after I started training that that was true. I didn't have to be a superstar, and I didn't have to be really good at athletics. And over time, I was able to do the athletic things that I wanted to do when I was that age. And karate enabled me to do that. I think as time has gone by, I have been influenced very, very strongly by so many people, so many fine instructors inside of JKA and outside of JKA. And also, I've been influenced strongly by people in other martial arts. Uh, I, I was very fortunate, very lucky, because during my time coming up in karate in the 1960s, when I was young and I was able to travel around and see a lot of people, the really big names in all the martial arts were coming to the United States at that time, trying to establish their own groups and their own organizations. So I was able to see and was very strongly influenced by people like uh, Koichi Kohei, who was the head of Aikido at that time. He was the only 10th Don under Uyeshiba, the founder. I was able to meet people like uh, Shoshin Nagamine, who was the head of, uh, who was the founder of Matsubayashi Shor in Ryu. That had a very strong impact on me. I think seeing these people and seeing the way they conducted themselves and the way they acted and the way they treated other people just always, always had uh, a very strong impact on me and my thinking and the way I wanted to, my thinking about the way I wanted to present myself in, in as a martial artist. So I think all of those people combined really had a tremendous impact on my thinking. I don't want you to be so nice. I want you to help your partner learn, all right? I'm gonna do the three attacks. We're gonna go, I'll show first way, most of you are doing it this way. Ready, go. Okay, that's only two, you get the idea. That's not what I want. I want you, when you leave today, to at least have some idea of the difference between, be reminded of the difference between an attack that is going to seriously injure you and an attack that's superfluous that you can deal with easily, relatively easily, understand? 99% of free sparring are attacks that you can deal with easily without dying. Understand? 1% will kill you. <laughs> kill you so dead you'll never recover. That's the way that works, uh, trust me. In my experience, long time, I've never seen it go any other way. So what I want you to do, start easy like this, easy attack, but with a different timing. Are you ready? Here we go. Are you ready? Now, he's got to stay aware and move. Understand? This didn't have to be a strong technique. It has to be pressuring him so he can see it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. You got it? Let's go. Hey, same way. When you were 12, you picked up Nishiyama Sensei's book, and, and you mentioned that earlier. Mm -hmm. um, 
So what impact later in your training did Nisha Amundsen say have um, that maybe had an impact on your views of, of karate training in general? I think the main thing with, with him was that he was constantly emphasizing the scientific nature of what we were doing. A lot of the science that we, we know now that a lot of the, what we thought was scientifically correct body-wise in the 60s is not, it's just simply not. But that's simply because we didn't know more uh, at that time. Now we have more information and we know that certain things work different ways than we thought they did. However, it was his commitment, in my view, to trying to scientifically explain everything in a rational manner that everybody could understand and that everybody could do. Uh, Nishiyama Sensei told me one time and very clearly that it didn't matter so much how the technique looks on the outside, but the important part was that the person was doing it well and correctly according to their own body, their own body style, and their own mentality, their own psychology. And I think that really was the, the strongest impact that he had, because that encouraged me to even today, to try to find rational reasons for why we do what we do, rather than just do it and hope for the best. In other words, not just imitation of another instructor or imitation of another person, but really trying to rationally figure out how does this work for my body, how will this work for my students and their bodies. He keeps his hands up real high, then I have trouble getting high, but he's also covered pretty low here, so what I want to do is I want to be, convince him that I'm going to kick him in the groin, so he drops it. See, he dropped that hand right down. Everybody see that? As soon as I bring my knee up and flex with my hip, he tries to he tries to come down. So I go low this way, and we're going real slow. I go low to bring his hands down. That creates the opening here that I can move to. Also, I can get the feeling like this, come low here, so both his hands come down toward it. That creates an opening high. If he's got his hands down low, I might go real high here, yeah, so I can catch him here, get his attention up here and kick him here. Everybody understand? You wrote a wonderful book, uh, Samurai Journey, about uh, Osamu Ozawa's biography. And uh, he spent thousands and thousands of hours listening to him, talking to him, visiting with him. Um, what, what things do you think that he was most adamantly, most profoundly adamant about with respect to Karate Do? I think Ozawa Sensei's main uh, feeling was that Karate was, is, a, a very serious matter that should be approached with deadly seriousness when you're on the floor and for the instructors when they're on the floor. And he was, more than anyone I have ever met, I think, convinced that this was the best form of self-discipline that human beings could engage in. He really saw it as a matter of self-discipline. Right. 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 Real slow, start off with, so we get the pattern here. Step in, punch, and shoot out. Yes. As soon as you hit there, I want you to squeeze your legs in. Get them behind the back. Knee. Stop it. Right, go back. Do it again. Step in, punch. Ready? It's Knee. Good. Go back. Exactly what you're doing in the last minute. Must get that in front of me. Ready? It's Knee. Okay, since you are the chief instructor of ASKA and president of AJKA. Obviously, these two national organizations must have some common ground or purpose. What do you think these organizations have in common that can benefit the average karate student? Both the AJKA and the ASKA are committed 100% to developing uh, teaching and developing uh, JK style Shotokan karate do. We both, both organizations teach it almost the same way. Uh, every instructor teaches a little bit differently, but that's because every instructor is a little bit different. Uh, everyone has their own personality, and everybody brings to their karate their entire person, their, their background, their education, uh, their, their biases, their prejudices, their loves, their hates. So everybody's going to be a little bit different, and that's a good thing, I think. I don't think it's, I don't think it's a good idea for everybody to be doing everything exactly the same way. However, that said, I think that the AJKA and ASKA, we really came together so that we could let people know that it's better to come together and to share knowledge and to acknowledge each other than it is to constantly fight about who's the best or which organization should be doing that and which organization should be doing this and who should be at the highest position. In other words, we have separate independent organizations that mutually respect and mutually recognize and mutually support each other. So any technical qualification issued by one organization is automatically recognized by the other. 
and vice versa. And I think that that is the, the, the main thing that holds us together. Also, the karate we teach is the same. So that is a very important and valuable thing for people as they travel around the country. And now, of course, AJKA has become international you know, on a very large scale. So even traveling internationally now, going to Europe and places like that, uh, Mexico, Canada, uh, people are finding out that we have nothing to argue about. We have nothing to uh, compete against each other with. We decided we pool our resources, support each other. And if the AJK gets big, bigger than us, that's great. And if we get bigger than them, that's great too. But it doesn't matter because we're going to mutually recognize regardless of the size, regardless of the instructors. What makes you so passionate about God that you spend so much time and effort in a lifetime doing that? Well, I, I don't think it's obsession. Uh, not in my case, I don't think I'm obsessed, but what it is, is it's my life. Uh, if a person puts their life into anything, I think that they then, everything that happens to them kind of comes to their mind, uh, or they go through life using that as a filter for everything that occurs to them, everything they see, everything that happens to them. In my case, it happens to be karate. Uh, in the very near term, my goals right now are to train and license uh, instructors, examiners, and judges in the organization. I want the next generation to be able now, before my generation is gone, I, want, I don't want that to happen. I want to wait until my generation is gone and then say, okay, go ahead, take over, see what you can do. What I want to see in the near future is, I want to see the new group that's coming up get their licenses as examiners so I can watch them give examinations and be happy with it. I want to teach them everything I know. I want our senior instructors to teach those people everything they know. And I want them to gain license and I want them to start actually acting on those licenses. I want to see them teaching. I want to see our younger people going out and giving seminars. I want to see them traveling around. I don't think that it should stay at the top. If, if it stays at the top, it just never the organization, the, the people never get any benefit. So I think, you know, if, of course there has to be structure, but I think from the top down, I want to see the next generation prepared now to take over, not wait until uh, the rest of us are so old that we can't do anything about it and then they decide they're just going to go their own way when we die. I don't want that to happen. I want this to be something that they can work together with. I want them to start knowing each other now. I want them to start thinking about the structure of how they're going to continue this, and I'm working hard on that right now. That's exactly uh, what I'm doing in the instructor training program. And I've already informed all of the instructors that in 2006 I want to see all of the licenses up to date for instructors and the next step will be examiners. Well, since uh, I think on a personal basis you, you affected the lives of a lot of people one-on-one, -on -one, uh, small groups and your organizational skills and meeting people and being willing to share. And I'm, I'm certain that your books are, are going to affect a lot of people that you may not ever meet. So I really appreciate you uh, sitting and sharing these thoughts and answering these questions today. My pleasure. And uh, thank you very much. Thank you.